As you can see, ECM technology has come a long way since the variable speed motor. We now have motors in almost every market segment of residential and light commercial HVAC. And as we've covered here, we've continued to lead and innovate in the past five years, and I don't think we're slowing down. So if you don't understand this technology, if you thought the only ECM motor was a variable speed, you can see there's a lot to learn, and that's what we're here for. ECM stands for electronically commutated motor. If you don't know what that means, that's okay, because when I was a contractor, I didn't either. The definition of ECM motors is a brushless DC three-phase motor with a permanent magnet rotor. Don't know what that means either? Well, that's great, because that's what we're going to talk about right now. As you can see here, there are different components to an ECM motor. There's actually a motor control and a motor, and we're gonna explain how all of these components work together to make ECM technology. First, single phase line voltage is fed to the motor control. And this could be 120 or 240, or even in one of our models, uh, 460 volt. That single phase power is then converted to DC voltage to operate the microprocessor. So inside the motor, we now have DC power operating microprocessor. Then the air handler or furnace or even package system sends communication to the motor control, telling the control when to turn on, when to turn off, and what it wants the motor to do, how much airflow, what kind of comfort it wants the motor to provide. The microprocessor is then going to use stored information to determine how to operate the motor. The way it does this is it determines how much torque and speed the motor needs and through controls takes that DC power and recreates a three-phase signal. It's not a sine wave, it's a three-phase DC signal that is sent to a three-phase motor. So essentially we have AC power converted to DC power operating a three-phase motor. Okay? Now, once the motor is up and running, the microprocessor is also going to monitor the speed and or torque of the motor. And the reason for doing so is ECM technology can be programmed for either maintaining a constant airflow point, maintaining a constant torque, or maintaining a constant speed, depending on how the technology is used in either a furnace or an air conditioning application. Now, part of that technology that I mentioned was the permanent magnet rotor. As you can see, the rotor of an ECM motor is permanently magnetized. We do that to increase the electrical efficiency of the motor. Because in a PSC motor, the rotor is not magnetized, and the energy that that motor draws and uses to magnetize the rotor is actually waste. It doesn't contribute to the mechanical operation of the motor. So with a permanent magnet rotor, you gain efficiency. On our rotor, we also have ball bearings, and we also have what's called resilient rings. And the resilient rings make the motor actually quieter. Now, another thing the permanent magnet rotor does, which I noticed a long time ago when I was in the field and I thought was kind of odd, is it makes the motor sort of cog. When you spin the motor, you can see it, it kind of shifts a little bit when it slows down and it stops a little bit faster than a normal motor would. That's because of the rotor interacting with the stator. That's perfectly normal. So the next time you give a motor a spin, an ECM motor a spin, and see it come to a stop and it looks kind of weird, you can say, oh, that's the permanent magnet rotor. Another way we use the permanent magnet rotor is called rotor position sensing. You see, in a DC motor, the control or whatever device is changing the frequency has to know when to do so. It has to know where the rotor is so it can keep the magnetic fields rotating ahead to keep the motor basically going around. In an AC motor, this is done automatically by the frequency cycling from the utility company to the product. In a DC motor, the control has to know when to change the frequency, which is actually a part of the name of the motor, electronically commutated motor. Commutate means to change frequency. So our motor actually is sensorless because of the permanent magnet rotor. You see, it's a three-phase motor but we actually only turn on two phases at any given time. We use the third phase and the permanent magnet rotor to look at the back EMF created as that rotor goes past the phase. 
So we use the rotor not only to know when to commutate, when to shift, shift the phases and keep the motor going around, but we also use that to know what the real-time RPM of the motor is so that we can change the motor operation on the fly as needed depending on how the motor is programmed. So what is the benefit of ECM technology? You may be asking yourself, why make a motor so complicated? Well, with this technology, we can program the motor through the control to do just about anything we want it to do. We can control airflow, we can give more comfort options, we can give a better, quieter, constant fan, and we can basically design the motor uh, through the HVAC manufacturer to do whatever they want it to do in the system. Now there's also a wide range of ways we can do that. We can do that with constant airflow, such as in the variable speed indoor blower motor, where the motor actually knows when to speed up and slow down to maintain a specified amount of airflow. We can do it with constant torque, and we can do it with constant speed. And with all of that, you get increased electrical efficiency. As you can see, ECM technology is not just used in variable speed motors. When I was a contractor about six, seven years ago in the field, I, the only motors there were in ECM were variable speed. Today, there are actually five different market segments of ECM technology. So as you can see, there's a lot to learn.